Hello everyone, and welcome to part 5 of how to make Pong in Unity. So last time we have completed the core mechanics of Pong, from moving the bat to, uh, around, to getting the ball to bounce around the screen, to getting the scoreboard to display each player's score. Now we are getting into the stage where we gotta polish up our game. And the first thing I want to work on is the ball. So for starters, I want to make it so it waits a few seconds and then launches in a random direction. The way we're going to do this is in our script. So what we're going to need is a function called ienumerator. We're going to name this pause. And what this will do is yield yeah, it will yield, return new, wait for seconds, and we want it to wait for about two seconds. And what this does is waits for two seconds before moving on to the next action in this function. And we want our next action to be to set the velocity to some value. And for now, we're just going to use this one just to test it. And then up here, we're going to start a coroutine in our pause function. So what this does is it starts this function, waits two seconds, and then moves our ball. Let's go into Unity and test it. So our ball is waiting there. Players get to just anticipate which direction the ball will go, and it goes. We can also... Oh. So the problem is that now we need to get it to pause after it leaves. So we can actually easily do this by just accessing this function again after it leaves and resets to the center of the screen. But first, we can actually get rid of this entire if statement. Since we're going to x equals negative 17 and x is 17, instead of checking both of those values, we can just take the absolute value of your transform.position.x and see if that's greater than 17, and then move it to the center of the screen. This way our code is just a bit more efficient and easier to read. So one thing we need to do is set our velocity to 0, 0 when we um, enter our pause function, because otherwise it would be kind of pointless to pause it and then move it, because the entire point of this pause function is so it doesn't move. Alright, so now we can get to the part where we want our ball to move in six unique directions. So now we need to make it move. The way we're going to do it in six directions is we're going to have a zero, a positive x, and a negative x. And we're also going to have a positive and negative y. Actually, x cannot be 0 because that would cause vertical movement. So y will either be positive, 0, or negative, and x will either be positive or 0. We can actually do this in two variables. So let's do int direction x and set it equal to a random value that is between negative 1 and going between negative 1 and 2 for this. However, since we don't want it to generate a 0, we need to say if direction x equals equals 0 and then just set it to a some sort of value. And I would just say 6. Actually, 
we'll say 1. And what we'll do down here is multiply by direction x. And then the second variable we're going to need is direction y. So basically the same code we have here, actually exactly the same code we have here, only this time we're not going to be converting any zeros we get. So that's all we do. Now the reason why this has to go from negative 1 to 2 is because it returns an integer. So let's say it generates the number 1.548. That would return a 1 because integer type variables get rid of the decimal. They don't round or anything. Well, technically they round down. But let's say it generates a 0 0.889. That would go back to zero. So you have to go from negative one to two in this case. So now let's test. It pauses for a few seconds and that time it goes straight across. Pauses for a few seconds. That one goes to the left. Can we get one to go diagonal? Yes, we do. And that one also goes to the left. So now it pauses and goes some random direction, which is good. So now the second thing I want to modify with the ball is make it so the player has a bit more control over where it goes. Like, as you can see, it just bounces around more or less the same direction. So because of that, if it were to go fling out left or right, that's the only direction it'll go for that entire match, which gets really boring. So what we can do is we can make it so the ball bounces in the direction that the bat is moving. So for this, our ball moves to the left. So if we're moving up a little, the ball should bounce to the top left corner. And if we're moving down, it should move to the bottom right corner. And if we're staying still, it'll just shoot in one direction. We do not have enough time in this video in order to go over that. So for this one, we're just going to improve the movement of our ball. I do not like how slow it's going. Still feels kind of slow to me, so let's move it up to 10. So at 10, let's see how it goes. Okay, yeah, that's a lot faster. I do like the increased speed. I also feel like there should be a bit more range with the camera. And for our top, let's make it so our ball cannot intersect the scoreboard. We also have to move the bottom. In fact, it might even be better if we were to instead make the top and bottom game objects into children of our camera. The way we do that is select our bottom and top and drag them under to camera. So now we can just easily keep track of them. And now if I were to go click play we have a much bigger space to work with, which means I can also move these paddles further back. I decided to put the paddles at 18 and negative 18. I'm also going to have to change this to 20 because we're working with a bigger area. So yeah, in the next episode, we're going to tweak how the bats hit the ball. So, whoa, that's not right. So to fix that bug you just saw, go back into the count score and change it to the same x value that is moving your um, ball to the center. Well, that wraps it up for this video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.